Good evening, everyone. We're uh, here for a capital planning committee. It's 1-13-21. If we could call the order at, oh my, my computer says 602. So we'll call it 602 at the global clock. I wanna thank everybody for making the time to, to get in here. We have two agenda items tonight. Uh, take a look at what, how well the execution went in 2021's budget. And then what's uh, the very first pass of what we're getting for our budgets tonight. Um, and won't go into too, too much discussion about the actual budgeting process, uh, the capital requests we can look at topically, and then we can invite in um, people for uh, supporting information at our next meeting. Uh, and of course, we'll schedule our next meeting. Um, so uh, with that, uh, once around the horn, how's everybody been since the last time we met? Jerry, nice backdrop. Thank you. Kilimanjaro. Yes. Uh, yeah, been good. Uh, a very low key holiday, uh, no traveling. Um, just mother-in-law in for uh, Christmas day. And, um, you know, my, my daughter's at Frontier and she's been doing uh, remote learning. They may, she's on the varsity, she's one of the three varsity captains. At this point, they don't even know they're gonna have a season. And probably right. just, there's going to be meeting. I think it's tonight, actually, Board of Health, and um, uh, they're going to make a determination on whether they can have a interscholastic competition. But yeah. if, if they don't, it's going to be seven weeks of practice, right? Two hours of drills a day, six days a week. <laughs> w, w, yeah. they'll be, they'll be uh, exercised and ready for next season. That's right. Yep. Right. Yep. <laughs> nice. So, How about you, Dana? How have you been since we last met? Yeah, I'm good. I, I go into the office three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, home on Tuesday, Thursday. That's the new normal. Yeah, the new normal. Good point. Peter, how have you been since we last met? Can't hear you. Can hear me? No, no sound. There you are. Oh, yeah. Now we got it. Here you now. Okay. Um, you don't feel live with you. Age becomes an accomplishment. Um, <laughs> I would say, you know, on the one hand, it's been, what, 10 months now where I haven't, you know, we haven't had another person in our house. We haven't been in anyone else's house. We've been really, really careful because both of us are old. But, uh, you know, we had we, we had no no family things for Thanksgiving or Christmas. You sort of missed that. But, you know, life is, you know, all things considered, life is just fine because there's so many people that have it so much worse. And, um so, you know, I, I count my blessing ways. And the only other thing I'll say is that school committee this past year has been way more uh, of, a, of a challenge than I could ever imagine when I got onto it, just by dealing with how we're gonna deal with the COVID stuff. And we've had to make decisions at school committee that I never anticipated having to make and that have been sometimes gut-wrenching decisions because you've got, uh, you can't please everybody and, uh, uh, it's been a challenge and I think we've done well and I think we've had good communication with uh, all the various parties and, and that to me is the main thing is you keep talking to people and you you avoid you know you I, I read something about you know someplace else in Franklin County where they are were dealing about dealing with school committees and there was a lot of anger they said from different sides and in our school committee meetings in a way they've been great because we get a lot of public comment it's passionate public comment, but it's incredibly respectful public comment. And um, boy, you know, that's just the way it ought to be. And it makes me feel real good about, you know, living where we do. It's a really good point. And we, we've, you know, seen those passions on certain issues or projects or whatever. Uh, it starts with um, an almost insatiable curiosity, but it seems that uh, residents generally speaking or participants generally speaking, you know, once they have that information out in front of them, that respectful tone um, is the default. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's really, good. It's really satisfying when that seeing that happen. Right. And and that it just makes you proud to live in the town. Yep. Great point, Mike. You're you're the new kid on the block. How have you been? I've been fine. Uh, yes, I am on the new on the block and. Uh, uh, as far as coming from the assessors. Uh, we're doing the same thing, Zooming. It took a while to get used to that too, and, and it changes. But uh, so far we've been 
keeping our heads above water and uh, things are going smoothly. We just got done working on a, uh, interviews and did our final interview uh, this evening, just that prior to this meeting uh, by Zooming. And uh, so everything is looking forward and I think we're going to have a good candidate uh, picked out for the support nice. of the town and for the board itself. <clears throat> That's great. Good for you. So Jeff, uh, if we could want to roll right into things we got done in the last. So the first agenda item is, you know, what did we get done last time, right? We appropriated, we recommended, how did we do? Is that up on the attachment? Oh, hang on. Yep. Screens are jumping. There you go. So this is, hope, can you see a, a spreadsheet? Yep. Yes. And it says fire. SCBA air packs? Yep. Okay, good. Um, so this is what was approved last year for capital mm -hmm. projects. And then I just have notes. So um, the air packs were purchased. The truck uh, lease payment was made in November. Yep. Um, the library is working on their projects. The uh, Heat pump compressors are being scheduled, were scheduled to be replaced today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, waiting on the parts for the acoustic paneling and um, waiting on a call back for the ADA door opener replacement, the library. Um, for so the Jeff, if I could, is it, is it the same? Is the same vendor doing both ADA project, excuse me, ADA door projects? I think they're uh, so we've reached out to them, and that, that was my suggestion, uh, to reach out to the, to the same vendor since they're familiar with us. Um, and I don't, I think Cindy had reached out to several people, and they all pointed back, I think, to this company saying they were really the only ones that, that do it in the area. Yeah. So we're just trying to get uh, uh, a quote on that. See what it'll be. Um, the work at Frontier, electric door hold, central clock repairs, and intercom repairs was completed. Good. Um, most of the floor repair, repair and replacement at the elementary school was completed, uh, except for the library, and that was because of the amount of stuff that they needed to move. Oh, yeah. um, but it, it's uh, planned to happen this winter, spring vacation. Um, and then the year one of the outdoor siding rim band uh, is scheduled for late, uh, early s summer or late spring, so later this year. I actually um, see where that work has begun. They were on site yesterday. Oh, great. Yep. Uh, and then the level control system replacement. Um, I think Rich said, I want to say he said it was scheduled like maybe next week to begin, at some point next week. Um, we still have not gotten word from Eversource about they had applied for a, um, an incentive or a grant from Eversource and we're still waiting to hear about that. But that's, that's where that is. So a fair amount completed. And of course there's a, a seasonal component that it looks like on, on some of it. Yeah. But all still scheduled, if it isn't done yet, still scheduled to, yeah. to happen by the end of the fiscal year. So I see down at the bottom of the sheet, we've got, well, that might be carryover from last year, right? Because I think our appropriation this year is 118, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Yep. So we'll just ignore that that bottom piece. That was a carryover. That was our sheet from last year. Um, cool. Cool. Any, any questions or thoughts about how, how uh, work's been executed so far? And thanks to the school committee for their work in the library. I know the heat pumps, there's been back and forth. Uh, the last, I think the last correspondence I had from Catherine was about the complete replacement of units versus just compressor work, Jerry, if I captured yeah. that correctly. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's the likelihood is that um, there, most of the heat pumps are um, past their useful life. Mm -hmm. um, they've exceeded it. They have 15 year operational life and they're 17 years old. So mm -hmm. we can expect continued failure. So we might as well just um, face the fact that we have 
get a, a reasonable schedule to just end up replacing them all over um, a multi-year period. So is there talk in the trustees to having a comprehensive review of the heating system and uh, looking at uh, efficiency upgrades, if any? We've had, we've had some conversations about that. Um, I was unable to attend the last meeting where I think there was a conversation about that, but uh, let me circle back with Catherine and um, I, cause I haven't yet got the media, the minutes from the last meeting. So okay. um, I know every time we did, they did a budget review in the last one. And I know we always revisit that mm -hmm. um, in the context of those, uh, that budget review. So um, yeah, I'll circle back and see what, what's in the minutes. I mean, that initial design as, as, as many moving parts as there are in it, mm -hmm. uh, those uh, compressors and auxiliary heat systems, you know, they're still being installed in buildings today. So it's not yeah. like that. It's not like uh, there's an old coal furnace somewhere that's got to be replaced. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there's not a, you know, it's the cost of completely reconfiguring the, you know, mm -hmm. HVAC system for the library is just prohibitive. So right. there's right. not, uh, if we, if we just schedule a piecemeal replacement of these components, um, so that we avoid unnecessary emergency expenses. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why we would want to upgrade or yep. change. Yep. So, um, Great point. I so, think that's where it stands. Any other uh, questions? Uh, uh, Peter on elementary, I see, you know, the mostly complete except for the library. And I, I understand that there's a bunch of stacks that are gonna be moved around inside there. Um, but the discussion amongst the committee members and staff are that that's gone relatively well. Oh yeah, there were uh, there was the whole area around where the uh, the uh, principal's office and the oh, yeah. uh, and the secretary and the nurse's office, all that, all the all the carpeting in there has been replaced. It was really yeah. in terrible shape. Yeah. Um, so that was it was basically that whole area plus the library that they were trying to hit this time. But the mm -hmm. library um, again, there's a whole lot of moving of stuff there that has to take place and. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff that ain't been normal in the last few months. And so, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, just getting, it's why I got a feeling that, that so, the, the rim band work wasn't done over the summer because the summer they were so busy trying to deal with, you know, how we're going to get school started back up that, um, yep. you know, but I don't think anything is, you know, I'm not concerned that anything <laughs> is running a little late. I think it's going to get done. It's just, yep. you know, that's the reality. That's good to hear. Uh, Jeff, with the ADA door replacement pieces, if there's other vendors that need to be looked at, I know there's only a, a handful that do that kind of work in here, but we can we can certainly talk. Uh, folks at Pioneer and Northampton do that. And anyway, we can talk about that if 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 there's searching that needs to be done. Great, thank you. Uh, where where are we on truck leases? Was it a five year lease? It was a seven year lease. Seven year lease, and okay. I think there are. Th three more years. Got it, that makes sense. Okay, Dana, any questions about the notes of where we're kind of at right now with uh, last year's expenditure and so far progress? Uh, <clears throat> no, the one uh, frustration that I have with looking at this year to come is we had a super long discussion last year on whether or not we should be talking about firearms. And my recollection is that we agreed that that, that would not be uh, something that we would be talking about uh, as a capital request. So I'm um, surprised to see it back here again. Yeah, I'm with you. I wanna circle back to the, the projects that were approved from last year's cycle, Dana, and questions about this uh, pro progress notes on them. So my only question, Peter, um, is how did we pay for the tents? That was Delta Sand. They donated? Correct, Peter? I don't know. I, you know, I tend to ask stuff that I feel like I need to know and there's certain things with that that I honestly don't know whether it was donation or whether it was through the CARES money. I'm, I'm, I know there's a whole lot of work, been a whole lot of, you know, basically working with the town that, that's arranged for the school to benefit from a whole lot of CARES money, um, a, a bunch of which went into uh, upgrading the ventilation, heating ventilation system uh, significantly because that was necessary to have any in school 
um, operation. You have to get the stuff up to basically new standards of, of much more, you know, shorter air exchange times and so on and so forth. So I know uh, Tom Feidenkevitz took a tour of the building like in September and it was like, yeah, you guys are doing exactly what you're supposed to, but that was money coming from the, from, you know, via the town from the CARES Act. And I don't know about the tents because I didn't see a reason to have to know. But there was some, so basically, it didn't come out of a town budget. I mean, no. I, I don't I don't see it as a capital expense. No. I, I'm, I, I'm not aware of it was never presented as something that they wanted our approval. Um, and given the fact that those things cost a fair bit, I'm guessing that it did not. You know, I haven't seen it any place in the general fund when I get the monthly ledger. So my assumption is that what uh, Scott said as far as a donation um, might be right on the ball. I'd never actually thought about it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but they were donations regardless of where they came from, correct? Uh, there were some tents and I just want to make sure that I'm not confusing. He's got the CARES ledger right there because his yeah. job hangs on it, audit. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they, they were CARES Act, the ones at the elementary school. Um, Rental and installation. Okay, cares on that one. My apologies, I misspoke. There have been other donations for other areas. Good. Okay. Um, so heat pumps, ordered parts for acoustic. It must be awfully quiet in the community room at the library, but I hear you. Still, you want to get that project done while uh, before we open back up. Uh, the SCBA pact uh, last year, part of that was Firemen's Association, part of it was SCBA. This was a, uh, associated with outfitting for the new uh, NFPA requirements. And I expect that we'll see something from the fire department. I haven't really drilled down uh, that this would end up being a multi-year, a multi-year ask over over their lifetime. It, my, not, go ahead. Sorry, my understanding is that the the fire department doesn't have any capital requests this year. They got six hundred thousand dollars last year. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I think they, they were able to request purchase everything that they were looking for as far as the air packs and equipment. Right. Right. Peter, you're going to say they share in the radio request. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. They absolutely do. Um, okay. Let's let's toggle over to uh, this year's and see what uh, again. First blush. Uh, we can take the time to. I think uh, there were comments from Rock about Millinghead. <coughs> Our questions. Well, well, we obviously know there's a lease payment. That's pretty straightforward. There's two more of those. And um, uh, generator, we know uh, there's uh, the final installation of a donated generator and milling head. I think there was concern last year. And oh, I'm just looking at the spreadsheet, not the actual request. I think it had to do with the size, right? I think it was a 13 right. that, inch. That was my recollection as well. Yeah. What's the biggest one you can actually do that makes some sense? Rock weighed in today, I think, or yesterday by email, suggesting that that's a, it's a, a valuable tool for uh, repairs, small repairs for roads. So I'll take that, take that for what it is. And uh, pick up sweeper, I guess. I guess if we're going to run around with the power broom, the question is, where does all of the materials go? So. Scott, can I make a comment on the the generator yeah so i think it, there, there are existing funds because i think you'll notice if you look at the detail that the quote right. was four, 14 and then installation so i yep. think there's about twelve thousand in existing funds mm -hmm. and it will part of it will be the purchase of a new generator and mm -hmm. then switching the old generator i think from public safety to highway which it can do the donated generator Right, so the donated generator originally was designed to cover both buildings because both buildings have two different voltages, it became a little complicated. Correct. So by having a designated generator for public safety, which gets it out of, there's currently one there, but it's inside the building. 
you know, remove that, get it outside the building. And then the second for highway side by side, you have two different power supplies for two different buildings and it's a much cleaner installation. And I'll just also note that we are looking at trying to fund that through grants, but I thought it would be yeah. good to put it on the capital request list as well. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, those grants would be, I think there's a the push right now around resiliency, right? And then we just, we just approved our uh, plan for resiliency. Yep. So there may be some opportunity there. Okay. Yep. And it's also the location of the emergency dispensing site. So we're also looking to see if it would be eligible for COVID funds. Yep. Yeah, it's also, it's also our, uh, e, uh, not just our EDS, but it's our EOC as well. Right, you got all the communications are all right there. Okay. And so Jerry, this the placeholder for uh, uh, HVAC repairs, we know they yep. come along. Yeah. There was a there was a number last year because of the vendor suggestion and the per unit replacement cost was was higher. I want to say twelve versus yeah. eight. Yeah. Is this because of some new information. Um, I expected that number to be higher. I'm going to yeah. have to. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that. Um, and again, tonight's just our, our very first pass. So yeah. we'll have time to drill down on these. Request is lower. There's a, I'm not going to argue with it, but um, <laughs> less is sometimes more. So right. um, let me check that out. Jerry, let me know if this rings about. I think Catherine said that there was a, a new vendor that also services them that offered a lower yeah. price. Yeah, there was. There is I, a, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. No, I. I I remember seeing it and thinking it was lower than last year as well and asked her and I thought that's what her answer was that they had found a new vendor um, who offered a more competitive price. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I have those notes here actually. Um, yeah, you're right, Jeff. That's it. Yeah, I wonder. I thought that was in the, all right. Yeah. Weren't okay. you using- yes. The cost of repairs is lower this year due to the library sourcing a new company to conduct our HVAC maintenance and repairs and provide right. lower quote than the previous company. There so that's go. the reason why it's less than in the previous years for the same capital improvement. That's good. Yes. Yeah, there are a couple of those units that are just, it's almost like Indiana Jones to get to them. <laughs> it's crazy how they get shoehorned in there when the building was empty and, you know, structurally accessible, but then you bottle the building up and finish it and yeah. you have to go work on it. And it's like, God forbid, the only thing you do is, anyway, there, there a handful of those. I think there's three specifically that are really difficult to get to. Yeah. yeah. And one of the failures this year was one of those difficult ones. It's a bear. That catwalk is, anybody who's been up there, that catwalk is just, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so Jeff, townwide radio replacement, we've we know that you know the uh frequency is changing, that it's going uh statewide is a requirement. Um we know also in talking with chiefs plural uh about getting any kind of grant help. Uh but this is the this is the whole nut, right? Full 75,000. Yes. And does that give us complete coverage in the rolling vehicles because in the rolling vehicles, uh, those radios also were expensive. Uh, I, I believe it includes a repeater for, one repeater for police and one repeater for fire. Right. So not in every vehicle, okay. but each department has one. Okay. And you know, are we back to replacing cruisers every single year? Uh, the chief is asking to uh, look at a schedule. Okay. And one of my more recent ones included the, the current list of cruisers, the years, the number of miles, just to give an idea of how we might start thinking about that. So historic, uh, from a historical perspective, uh, we tried to be on a triennial replacement schedule. 
Now we had some outliers and that ends up, uh, and it's difficult, but Dana, correct me if I'm <clears> wrong, but we were trying to get three full years for a long time and kind of out with the old and just kind of roll them up every three years. Yes. And I'm, I'm actually uh, looking down uh, at the next one and I'm kind of with Dana on that. I, I, on a purely personal, and I'm not, I, I do not exercise any kind of veto over anything here. I don't believe firearms are capital. But if, if we have to have that replacement, fired in the budget, just like an election budget, defend it on town meeting floor, come right back and drop it off your budget the next year until eight or nine years go by and you have say, we want to have firearms replacement again or have it as a warrant article. But I, I, I don't I don't think, my personal feeling is they don't fit in uh, the capital uh, by definition. Right, we, my... we, we had a lengthy, lengthy, lengthy discussion yep. last year because every time we get a new chief, he doesn't like this kind of gun, he likes that kind of gun. And so everyone has to get that kind of gun. And so now, you know, it's not really even a necessary expense. Yep. Uh, you know, everyone has a gun, but it's got the wrong name on it. So you right. need a gun that has this name on it so right. that we all have the same ammunition. That's, That's a great point, uh, Dana. Yeah, we had that trouble with trucks too, right? We, we had, a, we had a, a long time of freight liners and now we've got a lot of Fords or, you know, exercise name here. Great point. Um, so we dropped down to uh, Jim, this is at Frontier. And uh, Peter, this is part of the major maintenance plan, right? And capital? Yeah, so this, we, is, this is basically they've sent out, I mean, they, you know, this is our share of what they sent out to the four towns for, um, I guess this is the, you know, this is the lower level. It's stuff that is, you know, it's capital, but it's not, big stand on their own items of capital. And so they bunched up a bunch, you know, bunched up a few and, um, you know, you've been on that committee all along. So you, I'm sure know a whole lot more about it than I do. Yeah, their, their approach was to take and uh, supportive infrastructure under the category of major maintenance or direct replacement was one of the areas they could ask for, or guideline was to ask for either through capital planning or through uh, warrant articles. But if they did um, a programmed piece, they would roll up the volume of work in a given area for major maintenance or direct replacement, and they would assess it based on uh, the school, the, the regional agreement. So this at 8,612 is probably well, 40 grand worth of work total across Deerfield, Sunderland, Conway and, and uh, Wheatley. Um, and so again, our assessment. And I have to give the administration credit the last uh, years between what seemed like a really daunting list, if you looked at it back two years ago now, um, they really whacked away at the stuff that was hard to stand alone. It's like, you know, I'll use the stair tread replacements, right? It's like, we can't possibly do that. It's gonna be a quarter of a million dollars. Well, why not? You can do it um, by zone, by section, incrementally and consider it major maintenance. So some of this seems like that. I can only imagine what duct cleaning in the auditorium is gonna be like. <laughs> that can't be fun. There's a lot of humans, well, not, maybe not this year. Um, stage curtain, as I, as I recall, uh, does, is, past its flame retardance tag. So it has to, it has a life cycle. It's kind of like SCBAs. So it's gotta be a flame retardant curtain. Uh, it's a pretty expensive piece of equipment and it's gotta be replaced. So I applaud their effort and I'll look forward to drilling down on what the actual uh, total submission is. The total, the total, as best as I could do a quick calculation was right on 35,000. 35,000, okay. So uh, from the tool that we developed and hopefully uh, implement in the second year now, this gets that work on a scheduled format. It's not a big, beautiful project like a track or a roof or a whatever, but it's the stuff that keeps your building uh, where it needs to be. So 
good for them. The other thing, uh, just while we're on Frontier, um, I was watching part of a Frontier meeting in sometime maybe a month ago, and they were talking about the uh, track. Uh -huh. And um, again, you know more here, but let me just tell you what they, what I re recollect them saying, and you can correct me where I'm wrong, um, that the original estimate for the work was somewhere in the 400 plus thousand dollar range. Mm -hmm. And by the time when they started actually uh, laying out the specs for various, you know, what they actually wanted and digging into the details and so on and things end up, you know, you find problems and you find stuff costs more and so on. And uh, the number seemed to be more now in the $600,000 range, but that they felt that since they'd originally presented it to the towns at a 400000 and something dollar project that they were going to try to use uh, some chunk of money from their E and D that they could have, yep. they could uh, manage because they'd done a bunch of budget freezing last year, and uh, additional hundred thousand from something else that I can't remember. So that the amount coming back to the town, uh, the request coming back to the towns was in line with the original number that was being tossed around. And then the other thing was that the timing on it was such that uh, I, I don't know how many years they were going to borrow this over, but the first payment wasn't going to be due until FY twenty three. And therefore, it's not showing up in this year's request. Got it. Now, yeah, I, so think that, I think I got that right. But if you know something else, then. No, I think you're right. The, the, ask, the design bid and the, 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 the final uh, number was higher than original. No doubt about that. And you're right. The piece about E&D, which is straight school committee. There was also uh, talk about a CPA ask from Deerfield because of the amount of use that gets, happens with the Deerfield public. And that was to keep, that was two devices to be used to keep the original assessment down. When we first talked about financing uh, with that, Peter, it was gonna be in uh, uh, one year bands and maybe the track being at 600-ish might be a, a, a three bands and then with a five-year rollout. So that's how the assessment was gonna get, get played out. It, it, you have to forgive me. I think it's been a little, it's been a couple of meetings now, but I think we were in like the 27, 28,000 ish for the town of Sunderland when it came, but that was going to be on a debt schedule as opposed to uh, in, inside of capital. So right. the financing, I give them a lot of credit for not just being creative, but really exploring what the options are. That's been, that's been a really nice thing to see versus simply um, asking for the check. So uh -oh. one, of, one of their debates is actually what color the track's supposed to be. <laughs> believe it or not, I mean, the, 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 I think, you know, the, the, the expectation all along was going to be red because red is Frontier's color and red is, mm -hmm. you know, one of the standard colors you see tracks these days. But apparently red one costs a significant amount more than a black one. Huh. And so they're, I, I'm not sure if they had come to a final decision or yet, but it sounded like they were, you know, essentially leaning towards the black one because the amount of money you know, it's something like $40,000 more to make the thing red, which struck me as like nuts, but who knows? So on, on a, this, this is really tangential, but there was a wonderful podcast out of Harvard, Harvard University, their art museum, and it had to do with the history of pigments and what pigments are and how pigments came around and how much that, that crimson, that red pigment, you know, comes from a very specific space and how much money has been made over the however many millennia that red pigment's been out there. So anyway, it was really interesting to think about, well, we think about color. It's like, well, yeah, there's a base component to it, right? So anyway, it was interesting. The advantage, the advantage that was cited for black was that when you're in, you know, March and the cold weather and you're trying yeah. to get the track to melt off whatever ice is on it or something like that, a black one is going to absorb more heat and sure, so sure. the track may be usable sooner so anyway nope. good point good anyway. point so um uh jeff you had you just threw up the look like the actual application uh yeah and i i can pull any of those up if you want i, have them all I think tonight again i want to just go through the spreadsheet kind of topically look at it yep. and then we can drill down we have meetings beforehand um the uh, meetings coming up that are going to get well ahead of the, the, the um, budget process. We've only had one budget meeting and it looks like we're at least going to discuss postponing town meetings. So 
I'm not in a particular rush to make any decisions at all tonight, but it's nice to see what we've got for this set of submissions. And a so, steamers, go ahead. So on, on the school, uh, Rock was, was saying in his message that uh, if the spill containment uh, wasn't yep. uh, forced on us that uh, he would uh, be reluctant to commit mm -hmm. uh, to that. Uh, and what, what is a kitchen steamer? Uh, it's a basic, <laughs> okay, first of all, everything I say about a building, you have to understand, I don't know diddly about buildings okay, <laughs> and equipment and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I seem to be on this committee, but so, you know, whatever. Uh, all I know is that the kitchen steamer is something they use every day, you know, significantly every day for, for, for preparing the hot food. And the thing has been repaired and repaired and repaired, and it's really on its last legs. And that's like of the various things, that was their highest priority because hmm. it's dying. Could it, could it be a steam table for keeping food hot? Um, what I, just so you know, I, I suggested, um, I suggested, uh, or I tossed out the possibility to Jeff, um, that I, you know, get the, the, the couple folks from the school who really know what's going on there, including Bill Hildreth, who's the director of facilities to tune into the meeting so that he could explain this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and Jeff said, no, wait till the next time. Yeah. So that's fine. But so I'm going to sort of you know, just hedge here and say, can we wait to the next time and get the people that really know this mm -hmm. stuff to give you a proper explanation? Yeah. So the, there, there are commercial steamers used for food, pro, you know, food processing. To your point, Jerry, there's also the tables that keep them all alive, keep yeah. everything warm, right? This is more than just a warming table. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, can tell I, you can tell I don't know my way around the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> commercial or otherwise. Um, Okay, so the rim bands year two, that was a program that again, I think a creative approach that the school committee and the administration put forward. It's like, listen, if it's not gonna be, and we were there together, Dana, if, if you're gonna go around the entire school, it could easily be blank, but taking it you know, under 10,000 at a time, getting as much linear as you can and using the same approach. Um, and part of that, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're also gonna expose and see just what kind of migration might or might not have happened, right? You may have zones of that rim band that are okay. You may have other zones where that degradation crept farther into spaces that have got to be identified. So yes. I think, I think the, the multi-year approach of looking at that perimeter and finally getting the, uh, not finally, I shouldn't say that, getting a more appropriate material drainage plane, um, Drainage shelving, flashing over it makes much more sense. Uh, so we'll see this, and we can swing by and even talk to John, uh, see what see what they found. I mean, I, I here I would just say that, and I, again, I'm talking without really knowing. Um, is that seeing that that John is the one that's going to be doing the work, and he, he you know, he has, uh, you know, he's been involved with stuff at the school before in ways that we've really benefited from. Um, having him do that so I'm you know I think I think I, I was glad to see that yeah good point to to Rock's point on the and again this is another again creative approach or it's not it's not imminent failure so phase it in and get the project complete as opposed to you know being in the 60 70 thousand dollar range of the whole project and it turns into a whole whole nother level of right whole nother level of capital um with, to Rock's point about spill containment, uh, maybe Peter, uh, I'm sorry, Jeff, do we have that actual request? Yes. And uh, if so, when, when prior facilities director put it out there, he mentioned, you know, compliance and ease of access. Um, and there was yeah. initial insulation that wasn't, you know, wasn't very good, but right. still worked. I would just like to get Bill in here and have him. Yeah, yeah, you know, talk to those things. Yep. Yeah, because otherwise, I just don't feel like we're doing it justice. Yep, yep, that's a fair point. No and, doubt and, about and, that. And then the other thing I um, want to add is that an item is missing from this list. 
Um, and I don't know, I, I didn't notice it until just as this meeting started. Otherwise, I would have let Jeff know earlier and he could have checked to see. But there was another item that, again, it's not something I understand. It, it says here, replace rotten gable vent trims failing soffit. Uh, cost $9,600. And that was to be a similar priority. Basically, the uh, in terms of priorities, the first priority was the uh, kitchen equipment. The second was continuation of the rim band. Yep. And then the third slash fourth, basically, they were supposed to be sort of equal was this was the oil tank uh, stuff and this uh, item that, uh, you know, is new on the uh, on the list was replace rotten gable vent trims failing soffit. I okay. cannot explain it because I don't know builders. Okay. Um, but Bill so, can talk to that when he comes next time. So Jeff, can we just make sure that Bill's got that submitted next time? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just note, I, I looked up the the email from Darius and it says, order them in uh, three requests by a tab on the doc you provided. Okay. Order and it wasn't, and that one wasn't on the list. No, it was not well, on the then, list. We should so, still double check it because, right? You no, know, things happen, and if 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 it should have been, if something has changed and we didn't know about it, that's okay. But if it should have been and it just slipped through the cracks, then we ought to make sure it's on the list. Yeah, doesn't mean we're going to approve the money, but it ought to be on the list. Great and point, Peter. Gable vent soffit replacement. Is I'll send you. The, I'll send you a copy afterwards of of, of what I got. But the actual words, it says here, replace rotten gable, vent trims, failing soffit. Okay. Okay, thank you. Great. And the price given here was 9,600. Okay. So our first, our first pass at it, at least topically, you know, we, we raise you know, what we've got left over, we're basically at 122. And we got asks this year, The I think the outlier, truly the outlier is the radios. And, and that's important to bear in mind. Um, when you say outlier, what do you mean? I, you know, I, that that's a, that's a, 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 so effectively that's almost a mandate. We wouldn't necessarily be doing a wholesale exchange of our emergency uh, communication system if it weren't for the state moving off of one band and onto another, right? And that's that's an important piece to bear in mind. If it was a couple thousand dollars or five thousand dollars in radios for or radio upgrading equipment, that'd be one thing. This is a wholesale change. So I, I that's the reason I, I chose that word outlier, Peter. Um, I mean, I listen nothing, to there's nothing programmatic about it. We, I happen to listen to your the, the meeting at which this was presented, mm -hmm. and it sounded like if it sounded like basically we had a chance to get on board, or else we were going to be um, having a bunch of equipment we couldn't use to communicate yep. with the people we need to communicate with, yep. and getting on board at a later date was yep. going to be a whole lot more expensive. Correct. No, you're absolutely and, right. And so, right. in my thinking, prior to this meeting, and I'll just toss this out here, just you know, as a thinking point, is that you know, is there something like that? To me, it was like, I can't, I sort of couldn't imagine if I was, again, if I was understanding what was said at your meeting correctly, I couldn't imagine that we would not be wanting to do this. Um, and if that was the case, then is this something that we pull out of this list because it's basically gonna kill most, you know, almost everything else on the list. Right. And um, figure out, you know, a, a way to come up with a fund separately. Right, right. No, I, I tend, I tend to, I, I like the way you're thinking, Peter, and uh, it's important to bear in mind that you know we can fund this capital request through a, a couple of different methods. Um, and you're right, it, it does, it does eat up. You know, if you look at our our 122-ish starting point, which still seems woefully low, but it's something. Um, having right. 75 of that, you know, just be out there. Uh, it, it takes up a bunch of the oxygen. So you're, well, you're absolutely right. And we'll continue, we will explore finance committee, select board, department heads, uh, and this body, how, how can we fund that and, and do it in such a way that 
doesn't chew up all these other things because there, there are really good <laughs> capital elements on this list right now that you know extend the lives of buildings purchase some new equipment as you need it or continues the uh, HVAC cycles you know those kinds of things that the uh, capital planning is really targeted at so now Scott do you um I mean, I know that that uh, what we're looking here for available funds mm -hmm. uh, is basically using the same approach we used 12 months ago, which was uh, the amount raised uh, through the special capital levy, yep. um, plus any leftover from that prior, but no funds transferred from free cash because of, uh, you know, we did that last year because of all the financial uncertainty. So we just went with what came from the, from the tax levy. Yep. Um, when will we know what the the town's financial position is as far as free cash and you know some other stuff? Uh, is that going to be not till March, April? I would say that's a fair schedule. You know, because in the past you've had a formula which I can't recall exactly what it was yep. that took some percentage of free cash and yep. you know allocated it to the capital program. Yep, yep, yep. That, that formula still exists. It's still in the books. We chose to avoid it, skip it last year because of the level of uncertainty and. We're not entirely, uh, we haven't got to that level of budget discussion yet um, right. at, at both the finance committee and select board level. But, you know, this this discussion tonight about the first pass of the requests, I, I liked the idea and follow me all the way through. Thematically speaking, capital planning should start to eventually wind down to become major maintenance unless you're acquiring something. And that this, this in last year's capital requests have been at least in, to my mind in that theme. And I've, I've actually been, I've been, I've been happy with that. I think that's, that's a good basic indication about the infrastructure in the town of Sunderland, rolling equipment aside. You know what, can I toss out one thing? Yeah. And that is that, you know, I've been, I've been just in the back of my mind thinking uh, you know, concerned about just dealing with the school as the years go by, because the school is a huge building. Yep. And the school is, you know, the part that was was restored was, you know, that's now 15 years, which is some of the library and, you know, libraries getting getting on in, in years. And, and the part that wasn't is more like, you know, a little over 30 years. Right. And so, you know, we got something like the, you know, half the building, half the windows in the building, uh, the one whole side of the building, you know, are 30 plus years old and they're not working real well and yep. so on. And so there's, I just, without trying to, you know, pull out real numbers here and, and so on, I'm just giving us my sense. My sense is that the dollar amounts that we're spending this in this program for trying to keep up with the school's capital needs are no way sufficient. Yep. Okay. On a five or 10 or 15 year basis. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's picking off, you know, lesser, more immediate stuff, but it's not making the sort of, you know, scheduled timely progress on stuff that's going to be a bunch bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just, you know, I've been, I've been, trying to think about, you know, how you approach that. And, and I'm not really sure what the answer, and particularly now when, um, you know, our, you know, all the finances are sort of wacky. Um, the only thing that we, we do have uh, going for us is that, you know, this is the last FY21, I think it's last year we're paying for the library and the public service building. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's a bunch that's dropping off the tax rate and, yep. You know whether at that point it's worth thinking about, you know, taking what we're doing here with the capital program and and really trying to determine, you know, is the amount per year sufficient to do what we're trying to do? Sure. So, exactly. Jeff, do you, Jeff, do you want do you want to give you want to give him the the piece that's on Monday's agenda about capital and debt? Uh, uh on Tuesday. Tuesday's agenda. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, I, I, yeah, so you're right. Those things are dropping off. Um, I think that we're going to talk about sort of what you said. I mean, I think right now we have pretty low interest rates. Um, and we, I think we were, I think this is what you're getting at, Scott. And you can't kick me under the table, but, <laughs> um, you know, 
is do we want to borrow a sum of money while interest rates are low, knowing that there are likely cruiser replacements? We have a big radio, you know, a five or, you know, or longer year capital, major capital projects and, and um, bond it because interest rates are low and then use this uh, capital for some of the smaller, still capital projects, but not, not the major ones. So Peter, you, you got uh, just, just, just nose ahead of, my, ahead of my toes on my skis. Jeff and I have been talking about this for the last, oh, several weeks and do the, does the board, the finance committee get together and say, okay, we're gonna retire some debt how do we structure a debt authorization that funds capital? And what does it look like from a capital list perspective? So we're doing that homework to understand, can we borrow and set it in capital stabilization for use and authorization by town meeting through the capital budget process? And what would that look like? And does that look like $3 million, $5 million, a million dollars? We're not quite sure, but you're, you're absolutely right in the, bringing the points up about these being cyclical replacement of equipment or uh, major maintenance, or in the case of the rolling equipment using capital for uh, debt, which we're allowed to do. Now, the only other thing I'd add is that when I've raised this at school committee meetings recently, Mm -hmm. the feeling that we needed to have a um, you know more comprehensive capital plan because we weren't gonna we weren't keeping up yep you know and we weren't coming close to keeping up um, I, I think the response from Darius would be a bit of would be very cautious because you know he's 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 always been uh, conscientious of not laying on, not laying financial burdens on the town. Right. Okay. So that all you have to do was look at the budget process last spring, and you know, all of a sudden it was like, you know, okay, we're going back to level fund for all the, the towns are hurting, you know, or at least they're very likely going to be hurting, and so we're going to do what we can, and we're figuring out ways to go just level fund budgets, you know, across the board for all mm -hmm. the schools, and so I think he would be hesitant to you know to be asking for much here and yet i think he needs to be pushed to do that because i think you want to you know if you're going to do this you got to get you know you've got to sort of you got to believe that you're actually going to spend some money on it and uh so anyway i think you know there needs to be uh some good talking between you scott and jeff and the school administration about you know what really makes sense Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, start, what started as a uh, presentation a number of years ago from the finance director of the town or city, I guess it'd be town of Arlington, and how they funded capital has resonated with me for subsequent years. And uh, I'm, I'm of the mindset that it's even the, for the town the size of Sunderland, that it's worth exercising uh, or exploring that option. Not that you do everything through debt, on the contrary, but do you take that you know, bond authorization, insert whatever number here, and you use that for a stable tax rate. You don't go for overrides, you don't go for, you just fund it so that it stays steady state and that drops off, comes right back, stays right on there. And that funds not the operating side, but the capital side. And that's a, a role this committee and department heads would, would, would have, a, have a say in. So we're needing to understand what those rules of engagement are. And if that authorization with these rates the way they are is, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll make a number up, $3 million. And it's, it's you know, $100,000 a year for a 10-year $3 million bond. And again, I'm making up wild numbers. Uh, maybe that's something for us to look at. And it sits out there. And you whack away at that for things that can be borrowed for. Because we have to just get our I's dotted and our T's crossed after we're done fully exploring the idea. It works in cities, so why can't it work in a small town? 
And I use that, Peter, as a framework to say, okay, it's now it's the South Side windows, which is $200,000, right? At the elementary school. We know that some of them are in bad shape and it's gonna be $200,000. Well, how do we get that money today? Well, we'd have to do something like a borrowing authorization. So, so I, you know, just because the school administration hasn't asked for it, sure. okay, doesn't mean it doesn't need to be taken care of. It's just they have a sense of what the town, you know, can 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 swallow in terms of a capital request this year, and they don't want to just throw a bunch more out there that right. that they know won't be accepted. So. Whereas I think we still got to be talking about this stuff. Yep. No, you raise a great point. And, and I would, I would caution, I would, we're kind of down the, the budgeting rabbit hole as opposed to capital review, but I would caution that, you know, taking this approach, it, ta it may take one or two town meetings to educate, educate the public as to why you're doing it. Uh, yeah. And then how it's to be managed and then implement it. So it's done in other places. I, I tend to agree. This feels good on the surface, except it's, you know, eyeballs at the waterline most of the time. Okay. So we're going to be talking about that on Tuesday, at least the first pass. Uh, questions about the actual um, requests that we've got so far? I hear, I'm, I'm with you about town-wide radio and I hate this notion that, well, you got to do it because you got to do it. It kind of gets under my skin a little bit, but that, it is just, what it is. That's 75,000 just, it really feels like an unfunded mandate. Yeah, right. And, uh, right. Which I'm is what it is essentially. Yeah. So there's no grant or any other funding for the new equipment so that we're in compliance with the new frequency. Right, we're because actively- We're, we're actively mandating, the, you're mandating the change and then the towns have to find the money to replace their equipment. Right. Well, can I, the, two things. One, we did apply for a grant um, and we're not awarded a grant for it. So we tried. And two, there is, we're, it's actually, I think that it's for the Franklin County Emergency Communication System and they were awarded about two and a half million dollars. So, uh, so this 75,000, if we didn't do it, would really be about 150,000 if so we're already we don't do it now. Subsidy. So we're only getting a subsidy as it is. Correct. And this is what's left our, poor, our part to pay. Okay. That's less unreasonable. It requires a little less initial pushback, doesn't it, Jerry? Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. with you. The other thing, Scott, what what you and and especially comes from what Peter was talking about, you know, and that you know that especially the elementary school, which is a very very, which is one of the largest assets the town yeah. has, is that it's entirely appropriate for the school administration to identify capital needs, um, such as kitchen steamers and and so on, um, that. Uh, arise periodically because equipment is reaching the end of its useful life. But the mm -hmm. structure as a whole, I mean, we had this survey done. So it wasn't actually a survey, it was an analysis of the, um, the town's assets and their capital requirements to maintain yep. them in good working over order. You know, there was a short horizon of, I think, up to five years. Scott, I'm trying to remember this. I don't have yep. Five, 10, 10, 20. 10 years to 20 years. Yep. Um, and the expected cost to the town of maintaining those structures in good order um, for various types of repairs. It, that should, I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm listening to your, your discussion of funding mechanisms for stuff. Really that has to be, it almost has to be something that's separate from what the school department might request mm -hmm. because you know, I certainly understand they're not wanting to burden the town, but it, you know, the, the fact is the if the assets are properly maintained, it's gonna cost the town a hell of a lot more money. Correct. In the long run to replace an asset that's not properly maintained. So, you yep. know, you don't wanna wait till the windows are falling out of the frames to right. um, to request replacement, so. No, um, you're actually, you're, you and I are on the same page with respect to that. And that survey should be the launching point for what that debt schedule yeah. and the implementation for the building assets should look like. Yeah. yeah. And so that, that was the reason, well, that wasn't the reason. The reason for doing that was to allow us the information to hatch the plan to fund and implement. 
Yeah. So we've got that. It's a couple of years in the rears now. Let's 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 put out in front of the town the fund part, not project pieces, the fund part, and yeah. then say this is the best assessment we've got as of this date, and this is five, this is ten, this is fifteen, this is twenty. Right. So that conversation I expect to be much wider and broader uh, this this current budget cycle for two reasons. The first, of course, is historically low rates. We get great rates right now. So, and we have a great- We have a great rating too, don't we? Rating, I was just headed there. We have a great oh, rating. So let's let's go for it and put that out there. How that structured is the area that the finance committee and the board have to explore, right? Historically, you would say, well, we're gonna build a building. So we do the design process. We select architects, we have a space, we figure out a number. This is a little backwards to that. This is, well, we have those capital needs on this horizon and they're budgeted right now at this. We wanna borrow that value and then start the process. Right. So it's a little bit of a paradigm shift. And uh, again, it works in cities and it, why, the question is why wouldn't it work here in, in, in a smaller town? Dana, agencies, same way, right? Regionals are the same way. They go to debt on a pretty regular basis, but they retire it and then acquire it and then retire it and acquire it. Yep. Talking about a very similar approach here for the town to fund this piece. Um, Scott? Yeah, Peter. Um, so, you know, when I, when I, we had a school committee meeting last night and I said we had a meeting tonight and I said that, uh, you know, before long, I was going to be uh, asking, you know, if I could get them to come to a meeting to basically explain all this stuff to you. But it sure strikes me that this conversation we've been just having now, uh, you know, Darius said, just tell us when and, you know, make sure we get Darius here, too. And then we yeah. can sort of talk about just what we're talking about here. Sure. To, you know, basically you know, get him to understand that, yeah, we need to do some work here because this is something that that, that, that should that has to be part of our long-term planning. Right, right. You're absolutely right about that. And so to give him the, the sense that it's not just gonna be wasted effort. It may not, right. it may take some time to come to fruition, but it's not just, we're not just sort of playing games. Right, right, you raise a great point. And uh, we, can, we can talk specific to this list here. I think there's, my feeling is there's a, there's, there's two tracks this year. The, the, the track that we're looking at here in the spreadsheet is let's get this list funded at the same time. What is year 22 through, and God, these numbers are frightening from someone born when I was, especially being the oldest guy here. You know, I start thinking about 22 to 30. What does is, what is 30 look like from a budget cycle? How do we fund the 30 budget capital? We could do that. Yeah, we could do a 10 year authorization. How do we do that? Well, let's figure out how to do that and make it so it's in the scale as such that we can say with a straight face, yes, this year we implement cell facing windows at the school. We know it's gonna be $200,000. How do we do that? So it's gonna be an interesting year with respect to budgeting and respect to capital. That's for sure. Hey, Scott. But, yeah. Way, way long time ago when I was in the army, and I was involved in a, in a finance office and we were doing some work with budgeting yep. and, and, the, and the, the army budgeting back then, okay? You had like the standard, you know, last year, this year, next year, right. okay? And then it had what it called like the five year, you know, and then the last column was like out five years. And the years that were assigned, the year range that was assigned to out five years was 73 to 75. Sure. Okay, that's 1973 tonight. That was out there. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you want to think about that for? That's way out there. We're never going to get there. <laughs> well, you know, that's what we got to be doing here. So uh, analogous to that, Peter, when I worked for IP, the, the last projects I worked on was uh, in the 10th year of the 10-year capital plan. And it was being implemented. And we were planning on the 15-year cycle at another, at another plant that year so it can be done but yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway i think i would just like to see you know a process get going yep, um, yep. 
that took this seriously. Very and, good. And, and got the school thinking seriously about it and so on, because otherwise we just would just fall behind and fall behind right. and fall behind. All right. Anything else for uh, with respect to tonight's agenda? I mean, we got the we have the basic the framework in front of us. Uh, you guys got a you guys got a, uh, a little preview of the board's discussion over the next couple of weeks. Not that some side discussions haven't been happening, uh, but we have a little bit of homework before our next meeting. So why don't we talk about what that next meeting looks like? Dana, are Wednesdays okay with you? Yes. Okay. Does Wednesday is at six work for most people? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Jeff, what do you look up there for Wednesday? What do you guys think? Three weeks? Be good. Be good. That's February 3rd. That's got a nice sound to it. Yeah. How about February 3rd at six o'clock for our next meeting? Good. Good. All right. That'll give us a chance to talk to some department heads, see what else, if anything, trickles in, uh, update on what was spent. And then we have a draft report, but start doing the framework on for presentation to town meeting. Um, and we can do a straw man around that as well. And maybe we'll have some sense as to direction about um, long-term financing for the capital, at least the sentiment of the board and what the mechanisms look like. All right, February 3rd at six. Anything else for tonight? Yeah, I just want to add one other thing, and that is that um, if you're looking at, you know, what's been accomplished over the last 12 months or whatever the time frame is mm -hmm. in a capital sense, there were two things at the school that got done that weren't funded through this uh, capital program here. And one was replacing a boiler at the uh, oh, yeah. uh, school for roughly 30,000. Yep. And, that, and that was financed 20,000 through school from school choice money and 10,000 from uh, a, a fund that is used is there for building maintenance based on what users pay to, to rent the school. And we wiped out that fund, but yep. it was just we couldn't wait to, you know, it was like needed to be done. And then the other thing was a new compressor for the freezer at the cafeteria was not quite 10,000. And that got paid out of uh, school lunch fund. Unfortunately, COVID came along and it just wiped out the whole school lunch uh, yeah. financial picture. I mean, it's a disaster, but you know, there's nothing we can do about it. We have to live with it. Um, but in any case, those two things got done at the school through you know money that was available in, in these other funds, and we were trying to use it when as we could. So sure. And again, that speaks to the the process that the administration pitched and developed, and then presented to the towns about you know multiple, primarily three prongs, right? You got regular annual appropriation, whether it's by warrant article, reserve and E&D funds, and then capital to get these things done. I, 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 I would be remiss if I didn't say that both the administration and the town, uh, towns plural, have uh, slowly but surely adopted that to allow for some stability on the operating expense side. I know this is budgeting again, but you know we're not, diving into other areas to make room when we could use these, uh, whether it's this plan that we have in front of us, um, warrant articles when monies are available or resources that are there. I think it's been a recognition about the assets and their maintenance, especially major maintenance in the last, in the last handful of years, in particular with this administration. I think it's been great. Okay, anything else? If not, it's time for chocolate. Thank you. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. I move. Second. You can call us out, Jeff, at 710. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate the dialogue. Thank you, Scott. Good meeting.